<laughs> oh, hello. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, sorry, I have a BBC News notification. Um, it is Wednesday, it's 8 p.m., the 21st of March, and we have myself. I'm Alan Braithwaite, and you are. I don't know who I am today. You're Emily Braithwaite. I have to, we have to say. It's been slightly tough with the kids today. Hence I think. the buckets of gin. Hence the I've already drunk mine. Yeah. Hence the buckets of gin. So um, yeah, mm. tough day with the kids. Um, more, probably more to do with the fact that we were both a bit tired. So, but tough day. Tough day with the kids. Celebrating with a gin, but that's okay. We have a fantastic ask an expert this evening, don't we, my darling? I don't know. We've not done it yet. No, that's true. It's live <laughs> and off the cuff, and it all depends on who asks <laughs> what, etc. So uh, we've got Hannah and Kerry watching. That's fab. We're going to talk about you in a minute, Hannah. So <laughs> fantastic that you're on, and uh, Kerry and a few others. Emily. What have you been up to this week? Well, Alan, it just so happens. <laughs> who, come on, who were you interviewed by today? I happen to be today interviewed by Women's Own magazine. How fantastic is that? Apparently. My nan reads it, but I mean, she's dead, but ignore that. But my, you know, older people read it. I was contacted by Women's Own magazine today, and I had about... 45 minutes on the phone with him. They interviewed for a while, weren't you? Um, because as a working mum with three kids, yeah, yeah, whatever, um, they wanted to do a feature on me to go in this week's magazine, so make sure you'll buy it. Of, um, do you know what? I didn't even know Women's Own still existed. What did I? My mum read you? Bella when I was a kid. Bella. <laughs> They're doing a feature on me about being a, a working businesswoman with three kids under the age of five and um, do I have any advice for Princess Kate who's about to give birth for her third child? And I answered all the questions and it was a really fun interview but I was kind of sat there going, it's not really comparable is it? Because there's us in our mad jungle of a house with three kids who kind of like draw over the walls and, and argue and throw poo at each other and all that kind of stuff. They don't throw poo at each other. Don't <laughs> ben, each other. ben likes to wipe his own bum these days, but yes. anyway, um but all that. Kate, Catherine, wherever she is these days, Dutch is a Excuse me, you do not call her <laughs> Kate or Catherine or whatever. <laughs> you call her the her, well, you, you can call her, her Royal Duchess. Highness. This um, is the difference between the BBC and <laughs> ITV. We're the BBC. You don't call her that. Anyhow, she's going to have nannies and chauffeurs and people do her hair and makeup every day. I'm lucky if I even brush my hair every day. But anyway, they asked me, do I have any advice for the for the new arrival? So I had an, argue, uh, an article and they've written up 800 words about me and it's going to go in this week's magazine. So that was quite interesting. Fantastic. As I like to say, where Fab. do we find these things? That's these true. things is a, um, my great talk. Ask me, ask me. So, Alan, what have you done this week? Well, I actually haven't done that much. Well, it feels like it today. It's, what day is it? Wednesday. Wednesday. I don't feel like I've achieved a lot this week. But two things. So, first of all, we've had. Now, this is a reverse. Well, actually, it's a reverse, but because our camera is reversed, it's the right way. But anyway, this is the rubber stamp for our new coffee. Mm -hmm. The order is going in. It's gonna be live to buy soon. And this is the rubber stamp that we stamp on the bag. It turned up this week, campfire coffee. But uh, we are very, very excited about launching that. Other exciting news is-, is other news? Hannah joined us Hannah. this week. Hi Hannah, we Hannah, know you're watching you're tonight. Watching. But, uh, Hannah is the newest member of the, well, we, it, technically we're Bailey Lee Limited for, if, for anyone who really cares about the technicalities. Uh, uh, Becca, very very the camp camp camp. Don't worry, Becca, we'll make sure you mm -hmm. test a cuppa. Um, and Hannah is being brought on to ensure that the outside bride has some absolutely fab content in the blog. But it's up to date, it's relevant, it's exciting, and it's everything else that the Outside Bride blog is going to be and needs to be. Hannah's got loads of industry experience in weddings and yes. stuff, so she's going to have as much 
knowledge as we do, or probably more knowledge than we do because she's yes. worked in the industry for longer. So um, she's in the office tomorrow. We might have to get her on a quick Facebook Live tomorrow. Yes, Anna. well, either she'll be on a Bay Lily Meet or a Facebook Live, or I both. reckon, or both. We will see. <coughs> we will see. Um, other exciting news: the Outside Bride Instagram Ooh. has gone mental. Um, we've only been live on Instagram for about a month. Well, I was going to say it's less than a month, but about a month, and we are. A don't throw away from a thousand people following us on uh, Instagram. We've done some amazing mm -hmm. chatting and uh, some amazing connecting and all these oh. other like uh, social media. Don't be one of them. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, but uh, yes, we've got. Um, we're very excited. So if you don't follow us on uh, Instagram, Check we are out. the Outside Bride, and uh, yeah, we'd be. But Alan. But yes. More importantly. Oh, look at that! We are insane. That doesn't quite look how I think it should look when you flag it up. <laughs> um, last week on Ask the Expert, Helen Day, hi Helen if you're watching. Hi Helen if you're watching. If you're not, watching. that's absolutely fine, catch us on replay. Um, was talking about paper lanterns and we said they're a piece of pie to put up. Gin Becker, keep going Emily, sorry. What's this? I hope this is champagne in that glass. Oh though. no, definitely gin. gin. This definitely is gin day. Always gin. Yeah. Um, and we talked about the bane of our lives that are paper pom poms. And since we talked about them, they've been everywhere. We've seen them everywhere. The lanterns and yes. the pom-poms have been Even Haskins. everywhere. Haskins had a whole whole heap of them. So today we promised that we were going to sit here and ask an expert whilst we answer your questions. Can't even undo the ribbon, that's a good start. No. And we are going to fluff up, fluff up, fluff. <laughs> fluff, um, a paper pom-pom to see who's the best at doing them. So I'm going to have to read the instructions. You just need to tie a little bow, tie a little knot at the bow. end, because this is what you have. In, in my marquee days, where I don't always talk about, but one of my business partners agreed with one of the uh, couples booking a wedding marquee that we would do all of their pom-poms for them. Now, just picture, I can't remember now, five, six, seven men. Burning all. Men. Am I Burley? Well, you're not. The rest I'm, I'm, the having, team, I'm having Burley. <laughs> Five, six, seven of us, uh, marquee men, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, uh, trying to fluff up these pom poms. Stop saying fluff. You said fluff first. <laughs> so uh, it was not a good sign. Right. We do have questions, so, by the yeah, way. This we is do. not just the Alan and Emily show today. <laughs> right, no, no, don't start. So are you tied on? Well, yes. yeah, but I really don't know right. what to do. Now let's carry on and answer any questions. Right. So firstly, if anyone's on today who's a bride or a supplier, you might have any questions that you're not sure about if you've been asked, I think, by your brides, feel free to pop them up today. Yeah, chuck them up. We have got a question. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I've forgotten who asked it. I'm ever so sorry. Cool. No. Um, so Natalie uh, Siret. Natalie, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, Natalie, I've seen so many gorgeous pallet wood signs with what look like vinyl stickers on. Do they stick to the wood okay? I've got the wood, I've got the wood all together, sorry, but didn't know whether to paint them or stickers. Well, Natalie, that's a fab question. It is a fab question. It is a fab question because when you're doing an outdoor wedding, these um, the rustic signs, just they look fab, you know, we're pointing in that direction for the bar and pointing in that direction. How right, have you got right. <laughs> pointing in that And this is why. Pointing in that direction in the toilet. Yeah, anyway, we can confirm oh. That as long as the wood is smooth, which pallet wood might not be. Don't have all the answers because you don't. Oh, go on then. You do that part, and I'll do the so, next part. So there are a few things with vinyl when it comes to signs. And yes, they are fine. And yes, it looks gorgeous, especially if you're going for a really high um, finish uh, calligraphy style writing. I definitely recommend that vinyl. Shush. No, no, um, sorry. Vinyl is the way to go. Um, the things to compare to do when you're using vinyl. You can get some really nice cool bit if you want to, you can get it printed yourself or you can go and go on something like Etsy or not on the high street and get it already pre-printed with the words that you want. Um, what I would say though is make sure that when you're cutting it, because you, you will often need a scalpel or pair of scissors to cut around the edge of the, of the letters, um, don't cut too intricately. It will obviously when you, when you, when you apply the vinyl, um, you'll have the block colour from where your words are but also they'll be clear. So give yourself a little bit of an edge around it to apply it because if it's too fiddly, it will start to peel off. Give yourself quite a chunky, um, larger scale writing. Um, if the palette which you've got is quite rough, 
um, it may not stick as well as some, it gets more of a smooth wood as well. Um, I would suggest going with a smoother finish on your palettes if that's what you've got, just so it sticks a little bit better when you're applying it. And the other thing I would say if you're applying vinyl, and I know from experience, no, you need to fluff. You need to fluff. This is not fluff. This yeah, is but I, don't, I, don't, fact, I promise um, you, that's the when limits you're applying of my creativity. Any kind of, some people will be tempted to try and waterproof it and like maybe put a sealant or a varnish or something on top of it. Do not do that. Do not do that at all because depending on the type of vinyl and it, sometimes you, know, you get a slightly cheap, cheaper version, um, it will shrink and it won't look as good. So I would always say that if you're going to do it, make sure you cut chunkier than you than you think you'd need or um, and don't varnish or don't seal on top of it. That's nowhere near a pom pom. Well, you do yours, that's um, why. Um, but I'm not finished. Oh, it, go on. Um, an alternative to vinyl, if you want high like calligraphy style, um, I would paint it on, like chalk paint it on or chalk pen it on. And if you're not a calligrapher and you're really not quite sure how to do that, a really good cheat is to print it so go on to um, Word or Pages or whatever, whatever computer or software you use, print out your wording in the calligraphy style that you like, print it reversed, and then, a sneaky bit, get a bit of chalk and rub over the entire page, all over the word, put it on reverse, and then with a biro or pencil, um, go over the word, all over the lines, and then the chalk will... Um, Go on top and onto the wood, stick to the wood. Uh, stick to the wood, and then you can infill with chalk pen and chalk pen. So you get that look of calligraphy without it, um, without having to write it yourself and being all into it if you're not that way inclined. So just get a bit of paper, print it out, chalk on the back, rub over it, and then go over the words again, and it will do an imprint for you. That's what I suggest. Alan's got some suggestions. Yeah, yeah. Words. No, no, really, really. Um, uh, Helen, I know. Look at this. I nearly swore then. Look, uh, look at the state of this. I mean, this is the difference. Um, but look, at, we've been going six minutes. We've been on pom -poms. and they ripped. They ripped. Look, rubbish, um, rubbish. So going back to the signs, they they do look fantastic. There's a couple of more kind of um, oh, with the lanterns. Yeah, DIY. No, Emily, don't confuse it. We're on signs. Oh, signs, sorry, signs, sorry. signs. A couple more DIY orientated ways. So if you've got someone in the family who has a router and likes to route, you could route the letters out. And, and um, then paint them in or whatever you want. The other thing is when I was a scout, I still am technically, but when I was a younger scout, sort of 12, 13, we would heat up a metal tent peg and brand the word letters on. And that looks quite nice. It looks very, very rusty. The only other suggestion on the signs is, and I've just told Emily about this, on app of the day on your Apple iPhones, if you have them, uh, about an Android version. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is. It's really irrelevant what phone you got. About five days ago, there was a calligraphy training app. So I was just telling Emily about it. She's just gone and downloaded it. So if you really, it's my found, mission this year. I am going. You did say that. I'm you did genuinely say that. Modern calligraphy. Yeah. So um, if you fancy even having a go yourself, there is an app for that. Um, Helen, absolutely. This is. Head? She's gone. I'm glad I went. I didn't go. There. Yeah, the, the lanterns really are amazing. You know, you pop them. She's number one. Honestly, it. so guys. I said this last week and I'll say it again. We turned up at our friend Tom's wedding last year and Zoe, his wife, now wife, was like, Are you oh, still on that? I know. See, I finished. But but no, that's not, you, need, you do it and then you fluff. And then you puff. Sorry, Becca said less fluffing. So <laughs> yeah, and then that's just one. And then literally Zoe gave me a pile like that and said, Emily, can you help me? And I spent four hours, and I kid you not, four hours in the car during errands, sitting in the passenger seat, doing this. Yeah, who cares? Don't do Don't it. Don't buy the pom poms, do everyone. Or That's a public pay statement. Pay someone if you've got a wedding planner. Let them. Yeah, but that could be you. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. do it. No deal. No, no deal. Um, okay, so we've answered the signs and we've done the pom poms, Helen. Um, <laughs> and uh, well, that's it. Is that's it. it? Oh. Seems like way too much effort. Don't like him anyway. Yes, Ian, we agree. They really do good. look good in situ when you've got loads of them, but can you just pick up that, that size again? I think that's a six inch one, isn't it? Uh, no, the, um, eight? No, the actual, no. It's, it's the, that. It's, the diameter yeah. of the... So what I would say, going back to this, and I know we mentioned this in last week's R6, but we're going to ask it again, ask it again. It's all very well buying this size, and this is probably the smallest size you'll buy, 
but you'll need shed loads of these if you're gonna use any kind of paper pom-poms. If you're gonna do anything like this, again, don't. Um, if you're gonna use anything like that, do invest in the larger ones. Go with the 10 inch ones or this, there's the 50 centimeter kind of, you know, the big, big ones, because they'll give you much more impact, cover a lot more space, and you won't have to worry about fiddling with them too much. You'll get the same amount of color pop with the bigger ones for less money. So I would suggest doing that. What yes. do I give them at all? Um, we have a live question. Ooh. I love a live. Um, by the way, on our Ask an Expert lives, what we really want to do, we would really like to have a screen share, which mm. we can do with a bride. We could bring Hannah on. No, yeah, we could do <laughs> with, with a bride uh, or a groom, bride and groom, and like just answer a couple of questions. And we'd absolutely like to do a live chat like that. So um, just put that in the back of all your minds. And if you fancy it one day, just ping us a message. I didn't say ping, I'm sorry. Ping I'm sorry, corporate. send us a message or whatever and we can make that happen. Hannah says, my friend is getting married this year. What outside games would you suggest for kids? Should I have to go first? No, no, after you. Because <laughs> you're like, I can't think. No, well, it depends where I've you go. i a lot of talking today. So outdoor garden games are always great and winning and stuff. So things like Jenga and Connect Boards and all those kind of stuff. Um, I would suggest though, those kind of things, although great, um, would always need some sort of adult supervision because if you've got little kids with Jenga, you know, someone's going to have to always be the one who rebuilds it. Um, but I would say... What, before they start hitting each other with it? It's not only our kids, only right? Our kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say anything. I mean, I've always said getting an entertainer is a brilliant idea anyway. If you're going to spend any money on looking after the kids, bring in a kid's entertainer outside to do anything like that. But um, things like... Um, Getting, we, we've, we've, we've done kids' party tents before, getting um, colouring tables and that kind of stuff, or um, party packs with really easy games in, or things like giant bubbles, or help me out on the top. Well, I was, you know what I was thinking is it really depends how old the children are yeah. as well, because, you know, is it, children at weddings is, is a semi-taboo subject, yeah. because if you ask should children be at wedding or not you, you will absolutely get a split room um, some saying of course our children need to be there mm. and others going I don't want to spend £30 a head on a 10 year old who only wants to eat fish fingers so it is Kaylee the, you're going to have to watch it back I'm sorry what's um, this? Kaylee missed the flower fun Kay, yes. hold on sorry we are mid -com. we gave up we throw them on the we threw them on the floor there we go. Like a really good yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it really depends what age. The options are endless. I mean, you could just get the traditional games, you're like croquet, rounders, Jenga, uh, yeah. Connect Four, draughts, chess, etc., etc. I would say, sorry, Alan, no, no, that's fine. Go I would life. say, don't worry too much about thinking about giving them entertainment because things at weddings are exciting events anyway. They run around. There are other kids there. They make their own fun. If we get look at our kids as well as an example. If there are other kids that they don't know, they always make friends and they go off and run around the grounds and they just, they just like to run, don't they? I think you can yeah. be quite consumed in giving them activities and sometimes they don't need that. Well, and, sorry. No, that's fine. And yeah. they don't need to have that level of sort of engagement with things because they, they will go and chat to other people. There'll be the meal, there'll be... Yeah, loads of stuff going. So don't I, don't worry too yeah. much. There, there is a big thing. I've got two two rules when when anyone ever asks me about their wedding. Rule one is sit down Sunday night with you and your other half mm. with a glass of wine, or whatever gin. you're drinking, and talk, discuss how you want your wedding to feel, yeah. what you want to look at, what you want to feel. I'm not talking about feeling, you know, happy. I'm talking about like the ambiance of the day. Do you want it to be energetic? Do you want to be this? You know, what do you want to look at? What do you want your guests to look yeah. at? You know, wherever it depends on. The second bit is less is more. Yeah. Less is absolutely more at a wedding. Your guests are not going to know what your table plan looked like. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do a nice table plan because absolutely they look fantastic. You know, whether you go for a rustic ladder or a photo frame or a tree or whatever they look fab but that your guests aren't going to remember they don't know whether you've got a lime wash shivari or a wooden you and your lime wash I love a lime wash shivari I love a lime wash shivari with a natural seat pack um, you know they don't they don't know they, they don't know the difference um, so less is truly more and that's not just about your budget that's about not overcrowding your day and going right next everyone next next Chinese lanterns next Every, you know and everything else oh, don't bring up Chinese lanterns that's another contentious issue um, so genuinely discuss how your day is and less is more because you, or, you know 
can best the bouncy castle. Oh yeah, or just get a bouncy just castle. Get something like a bouncy castle yeah. where they can just go mad on Didn't it. Didn't we do that? We did that poll in the outside bride mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. Let me um, see if I can find that poll quickly and we see who uh, Emily fill for me, please. Um, today I'm drinking Martin Miller's and it's a lovely smooth gin. I'm not serving it right today because I haven't got the right stuff in the house. It was a bit of an emergency. But it's best served. Oh, here we go. <laughs> right, I found, luckily I found it. Strawberries so, and crack back pepper. Yeah. Back pepper. But basically, we did a what you're going to have at your wedding. And top of the list with eight people, they put garden games, Jenga, yeah. Connect Four. And actually, you know, on the whole, less is more. Just sorting out a box of garden games is absolutely fine. Uh, then we went for photo booth was the second most popular. Third most popular was an ice cream cart or van. Um, I imagine an ice cream cart would keep the kids entertained. Or full of sugar. Or full of sugar. Bouncy Castle was actually the least popular, or one of the least popular. Only two people said mm. they were having a Bouncy Castle at their outdoor wedding. And only one, and that was me, said magician. <sighs> Ours was a weirdo, but it was quite entertaining. No, it wasn't, no. Yeah, no, it was fine, it was fine. Can we talk about our magician for a little bit? Don't mention it. I don't even know his name. I don't even know his name anymore. Fair point, actually, I don't know his name. But I was drawn into him at a wedding fair, and he kind of did this magic trick with a cricket ball. And I was like, wow, we need to book you now. And Just I, to confirm, Emily rang me from the wedding fair saying, Alan, I need to book this magician mm-hmm. for 300 pounds. I did. So I said, Emily, you've got to be kidding me, darling. That sounds excessive, <laughs> or words to that effect. And Emily went, no, no, he's amazing. So I said, I trust you. Yeah, that, that was his downfall. Yeah. That was his downfall. Don't trust me. No. But I'm, I'm a bit of a bad judge of character with things like that. And he got to our wedding and I had forgotten we booked him to be number one. And number two, he was kind of milling around outside whilst we're having canapes and drinks. And he was just a bit creepy, wasn't he? Yeah. Just a bit no, creepy. he was a bit creepy. Mm. So don't um, care, but magicians can be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good no, the, 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 his good. magic was okay. And we've had a recommendation from Becca for Kids Entertainment, actually. Sharky and George. It's on the comments if anyone wants to go through and have a look. Sharky and George, like the cartoon Sharky and George, is an actual thing. Epic Children's Entertainment, business. Um, cool. Sounds very creepy. Yeah, guys, so we've had a recommendation for Kids Entertainment, so definitely check it out. And that's what we like about the outside bride community. Um, okay, I, I'm going to put it out there. Unless anyone's got a last minute question, an easy one they want to sneak through, um, we're going to call it a day. Now, contrary to what you may feel, we haven't had that much to drink this evening. <laughs> We've only had one gin and tonic I'm each. just drunk on life. No, this is the dizziness. It's, it's Women's Own magazine. It's done it to me. <laughs> like the fame's gone to my head. Mine's the dizzy excitement of the kids being asleep in bed. Um, yeah, I know. I've jinxed it. So... Um, um, if anyone has any burning questions from any specific experts this week, yeah. um, we have got a wealth and bank of suppliers who are waiting to speak to you. If you want to speak to anyone in particular, like we did a few weeks ago with um, Belinda the Celebrant, um, please let us know in the comments below as well and we will line someone up for either during the week or next week. Fab. Um, like landowners, like I don't know, Becca Holden might be. Do we know any landowners? Know any <laughs> <laughs> um, any, anyone at all, is it got anything desperate they want to know? It's not fair to mention Becca without no mention that. Holden Farm Becca a stunning <laughs> field on the South Downs Way highly recommended yes so yeah absolutely right that's it done so I think thank you very much thank you very much everybody uh, we hope you've enjoyed this hope you've got something from it as always uh, Becca our pleasure <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for your questions we will tag those who ask questions in mm-hmm. the title to the live as always and this goes on YouTube. We'd love it if you checked out our channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Bay Lily Bell Tents and subscribe. We would love it if we you could help us. We would love it. Mm. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you again same time next week. Oh my God, Bye. we stopped. We just stopped doing it. High five that one. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Take it easy, everyone. Bye. Night night. Bye.